Hi everyone, it's been a while since I've mentioned this project but I have been doing quite a bit of work on it. For those of you who haven't seen the other videos, I've designed a simple CPU architecture, built it out of wires, bits of washing machine, dodgy parts from shady Chinese websites and then been writing a nice software stack. So that's a compiler for a high level language, an emulator, an integrated development environment or IDE, an operating system and a whole bunch of supporting software for programming device, building OS images, things like that. Now, the project started out just for fun, but with the amount of A-levels I'm taking, I don't have time for things like fun at the moment, so I've made this my A-level computing project. This means I've also got to do an enormous write-up, which is up to about 100 pages so far, because there is quite a bit to document, but that's probably a good thing because my documentation is usually slightly lacking. So here's an example program in that high level language. Don't be fooled, it looks like C but it's not because things don't work. <laughs> anyway, um, this is first line you should be able to read it. it, says hash include standard defs which includes a header file like C but not C which contains a few macros like C but not C for input and output, the locations of IO registers, things like that, not much else. That's included in all programs in this language that target this machine. This next line includes a file which contains a bunch of commands for the linker, which is the part of the compiler responsible for wadging all the bits together to make an executable program. That's probably the best definition I've ever heard from anyone. There's one file that's already been compiled which contains the driver code for the screen, keyboard, flash storage device, file system code, syscalls and library code, things like that, which is resident in ROM. This program that we're looking at now is going to be loaded into RAM, so this file tells it where all the ROM functions are, how to use them, as well as locations of a few global variables like the screen buffer. So I won't go into too much detail in terms of how this program is actually coded, other than to say that what it does is pretty neat, it's a hex editor, and let's just jump straight in and load the operating system in the emulator. So we've got on the left a big hex view which contains the contents of ROM and RAM which you can edit in real time as the program runs which is useful sometimes. We've got the screen which is the same standard hardware interface as is used by the actual computer itself which is really handy because you can run the same code unmodified on both the computer itself and the emulator. And then we've got this view here of the contents of the flash storage device. So load up don't be fooled by the file name, this is the operating system code. It contains syscalls, drivers. And this is the image for the flash device which contains files, programs, that sort of stuff. Here we've got the list of files and then down below we've got the actual file contents. So let's just press start. Prints a little message, starts running a program. There's actually quite a bit going on behind the scenes here because we've got, well for example, machine does not support pointers in direct addressing which are kind of important for writing programs so it's kind of a nuisance so the way the compiler solves this is to write self-modifying code which is generally frowned upon for a number of reasons that don't really apply here problem with self-modifying code is that the code lives in ROM so it can't be modified and I won't go into how that actually works under the hood but it's quite interesting so this here is the shell program it's called manage and it's the equivalent of something like command prompt in Windows, bash or similar in Linux or Unix or GNU slash Linux, whatever it's called this week. And as with bash, we type ls and it will list the files currently on the device. So hello, manage. Manage is this program. Sample text is a text file which contains, well, we'll see, and the hex editor program we just saw. So we type cat sample text which will print this file onto the screen so that is a short story which is stored as a text file which we can now read not that you'd want to we can muck about with the file system cp sample text so this is a copy command story so it will first create a new file which we can see here it will search for free space to decide where it creates that file. 
So the last file here is at the fifth sector of the file system and it's two sectors long. So this one is at the seventh. It'll search through those, find the first available space. It'll then erase that part of the flash device and then read byte by byte into memory and program into that new file location. Which takes quite a while but I'm working on that. Should get faster. So if you now list the files and new files there and if we look at the contents of that file it's the same. Create that. We can then delete the original file if we want. So on. So we can manipulate the file system. Now, the useful bit, what makes this the useful operating system, is that we can load programs. So we type run, hex edit. This is that file we were looking at earlier, that program. Takes quite a while to load. Again, I'm working on that. The actual machine itself runs about four times faster than this. This is about a 2 megahertz clock speed equivalent. The actual machine is about 8. So this will take about 15 seconds to load. It's an 8 kilobyte program. Pardon me. It will ask us for a file name and we're going to say dbg cat. Doesn't exist. So we'll create the file. And then we will get a nice hex editor interface eventually. Hex is, well, hex editor is a file for editing binary files. Unfortunately, binary takes up loads of space on the screen because it's just ones and zeros. So we use a system called hexadecimal. What we're going to do here is write a simple program. Unfortunately, this is going to be in machine code, so bear with me. C001, jump to 8008. I'll talk to myself while I do this, sorry. Oh. So this first one, um, that's wrong. 7D00. Zero, zero. This first one will clear a byte in memory at the address uh, B000 zero, 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 and then jump to the next instruction next instruction will set that variable, set that address, that byte in RAM to not the inversion of the debug input register and then jump to next instruction one zero eight zero one zero you'll notice that this is um, based off of the address a zero 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 that's because this program gets loaded into RAM, so it will then start from the start RAM, start of RAM, which is 8000, and then write that value, again inverted, so it's the same value, to the debug output register, and go to the start of the program. Oh, 8000, 8000, press X, save first, yes and it doesn't actually print a message to tell you it's saving probably ought to add that but it is now writing that file and if we check so the files that address 4000 in flash 4000 we can see it has written those bytes into the file so it'll exit it actually reboots the computer but um, I'll change that I'll get to it. Start running our shell program again. So you can see here we've got the same bytes we had earlier. Clear it, read, write, loop. And if you list files, we can see what we just wrote should be there. DBG cat run DBG cat. It'll run that. I'm hoping this is going to work because it'd be a bit embarrassing if it doesn't. And I'm pretty sure that's done. So we put these switches, put the value, say, C5 in, and that appears on the debug output register, which is this set of LEDs here. So that is a program written on this computer, running on this computer, which I think is pretty neat. If you're interested or you'd like to find out more, then the link to my GitHub site is below. 
should be quite a good read if you're into processors, if not you might want to give it a miss. Thanks for watching and goodbye.